What's up, spectators? Welcome back to another episode of Ace Attorney 6. I apologize for the no video yesterday. I'm really struggling trying to get all my videos out this week. Still recovering from Thanksgiving last week, but I'll see. I'm still trying to get every video up every morning, so here we go. Look, I hear you've been serving Garan. Rather faithfully, in fact. Whatever happened to our dream of taking her down and changing this country, son? The past is the past. What do you mean? Why are you doing this? It's simple. People change. The Nayuta you knew exists no more. Listen, son, I don't know what made you change like this. But you're still my boy, even if you prosecute my case. The rest of the Defiant Dragons and I eagerly await your return. Whenever you're ready, we'll welcome you back with open arms. As I said, I've moved on. But did you let it go? Let us waste no more time, for flowers do not blossom simply from talk of the past. Why do I get the feeling there's something he wants to say but can't? Guard, move the accused to the interrogation room. Yes, sir, this way, you rebel scum. Watch it, not so rough, will you? Is he seriously going to prosecute his own father? Oops, wait, hold on, come on. Nope, don't care about that. I guess we'll go to the residence? This overturned urn has spilled water everywhere. Everything around it is soaking wet. Don't look at me! Rightly or wrongly, I'm guessing Athena's the type who gets blamed for a lot of things. And the more people accuse her, the more defensive she becomes. Even to the point of preemptively denying any wrongdoing. I said it wasn't me! I never said it was. Somebody got a little carried away decorating this place. There's a golden lion keeping watch at the entrance. That frog looks like it's cowering under the lion's glare. Really? Because to me it looks like the frog is glaring at the lion. Come on, Athena, how does that make any sense? I just call him as I see him. Guess we'll just have to agree to disagree. Vibrant lotus flowers floating on still waters. Butterflies dancing about. It's almost supernatural in its beauty. And at the center of it all rises the tomb where Amara's soul slumbers. It makes you wonder if that bridge there is a gateway to the hereafter. Yeah, especially after both Jerk and Inga crossed that bridge earlier. Are these Inga's footprints? They appear to be heading toward the tomb. Didn't Princess Rafa mention something about that? You know, something about him rushing over to the tomb before we arrived? I wonder if he had accidentally dozed off before the exchange or something. The previous queen, Amara, was laid to rest in her own private tomb. Pretty impressive. They say it costs some 800 million to build, and took 400 workers five years to complete. Special memorial rites were also conducted at various points of its construction. That's quite an undertaking. It was built with donations from her devoted subjects and royalty of neighboring countries. It ended up giving a huge boost to the national economy. Queen Amara must have been one charismatic lady. Let's see... 
Oh, what's that? The palace of Queen Garan is built to impress. Its white walls and gold ornamenta ornamentation lend to an imposing air. It makes Minister Inga's residence look downright humble by comparison. Yeah, it shows the difference in their tastes, and which one wears the pants, so to speak. That looks like everything. Oh. Oh, look at those flowers. They give the whole house such a cute vibe. I wonder if this is where Princess Rafa lives. I doubt it. She doesn't look like the type to decorate with cute flowers. I mean, I may not know her well, but she seems awfully serious and snobby. I bet she uses nothing but roses and peonies. Stuffy old people flowers, you know? Apollo. I guess it's too much to ask that you not judge a book by its cover, huh? What's that supposed to mean? Okay, it's back out. And move to the crime scene. So, this is the tomb of Amara, the previous queen of Kurain. It's really lavish. Guess you could say it's fit for a queen. Is the faceless woman in that mural over there Amara? No, that's the Holy Mother. She's the one who brought spirit channeling to Kurain. Oh right, the woman in the orb. It's you two! Getting right down to business, I see. Hey, it's the detective. Hi, Emma. We heard you'd give us a hand if we needed it. Yep, Mr. Edgeworth asked me to help where I could. So, it's been quite a while since you've been back in Kurain, I hear. More than ten years, in fact. Well, you sure didn't waste any time. I mean, you're already mixed up in a murder. You're as big of a trouble magnet as Mr. Wright. Please don't say that. My luck's already bad enough as it is. Emma, I hear Prosecutor Sadmati has requested your services again. He seems to have really taken a liking to you. You mean his ephemeral holiness? I don't mind that he approves of me and my abilities. It's just his people skills need some serious work. But when he manages a smile and compliments my work, it's hard to say no. Plus, working on investigations- oh, but flying back and forth between here and home every few days with no days off. That's been tough, and the lack of sleep has been brutal on my skin. To make matters worse, the defendant in this case is someone I know. I mean, how could this get any worse? Much, 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 much! Sounds like they got one complicated prosecutor-detective relationship going on. Emma. Have you determined the cause of death? Blood loss from a stab wound. A single stab in the back was enough to cause the victim to bleed to death. The estimated time of death is 3 p.m., which is when Dirk came in uh, onto the scene. Yeah. Any suspect besides Dirk? No, he, Maya, and the minister were the only ones here. And Maya had been tied up until she was freed by the Queen's royal guard. Could someone have been hiding somewhere in here? Not likely. I was told this tomb was searched from top to bottom right after the murder. And during that time, the Royal Guard set up a perimeter to prevent anyone from escaping. In other words, the crime scene was completely sealed off. It would appear so. No way for a third party to escape without being spotted, so... Great. It's another one of those convoluted locked room mysteries. About the victim, Minister Inga. He was the kingdom's minister of justice, correct? Yes, Inga Karkul Kurain was the second most powerful figure in Kurain. Plus, he was married to the queen. Seems strange that someone of his status would have ducked someone. Apparently, he only told a few of his most loyal subordinates about his plan. 
That way, there was little chance of the police or even the queen finding out. What was Inga hoping to gain by getting his hands on the orb? That I don't know, but I'm working on it. I wonder if it really was for what Paul Attition said. I must deliver it to my benefactor at all costs. What do they want that relic for anyway? It's something to do with an old legend. My patron seeks the great power said to be granted to whoever solves its secret. A great power that is said to be bestowed on whoever solves the orb's secret. In Kurain, only those who can channel spirits are said to be fit to rule. Was that why Inga wanted such power? Did he want to be king? So this is the tomb of the previous queen. Yes, Queen Amara was laid to rest here. She lost her life in an arsonist's blaze. What a tragic end. I heard this tomb sits on the actual site of her residence before it was burned down. They built it on the same spot so her soul could rest in peace. So this is where the fire happened, huh? Why do you think Minister Inga was holding Miss Faye captive here? It's the perfect spot if you think about it. It's close to his private quarters, which made it easy to keep an eye on his prisoner. And the courtyard is only open to the royal family, so we had little fear of prying eyes. Plus, the tomb is normally locked, and only the royal family is allowed access. So that's why he picked this place. How long had Miss Faye been held captive? About six days. Really? That long? It appears that she was severely weakened by her prolonged confinement. She passed out as soon as she was freed and is now an IV drip at the hospital. On end. Ugh. She's been asleep ever since. Poor Miss Faye. Hope she gets better soon. Emma, do you mind if we start looking around? Sure, I've already got the okay. Knock yourselves out. And here. It's a diagram the police drew of the tomb. I thought I'd give you a copy to help your investigation along. Thank you. And let me know if you need my forensic expertise. Don't you dare keep all the fun to yourselves, you hear? You don't need to worry about that. Besides, I'd hardly classify this as fun. Let's take a look. So this is Amara's sarcophagus. Let's take a closer look. These curtains open, Apollo. That's one big sarcophagus. They say the mummy of Amara, the former queen, rests inside. A mummy, huh? Rats, it's locked! Don't touch that! You mean we can't search inside it? Not a chance! Besides, it's not something anyone would try opening anyway. What if the real killer's hiding inside? Hey, anyone in there? Don't do that, you're gonna get us cursed! Boom, boom, boom. The queen likely bears a grudge toward the living after such a violent, painful death. So no one dares touch the sarcophagus for fear of incurring her wrath. Oh no, Apollo. What am I gonna do? Don't look at me. In any case, the sarcophagus is temperature controlled. It's kept really cold to preserve the mummy. So even if someone did decide to hide inside it, they would eventually freeze to death. I see. Still, if they bundled up, I bet a person could hide in there for a little while. That's it?
It looks like the Holy Mother was painted here to watch over a Mara sarcophagus. So it's like this tomb is protected by the Founder. That must be so reassuring to those she left behind. Only one problem, they didn't paint the eyes she needs to say to do said watching. Blah. Come to think of it, she doesn't have a mouth to smile down on the tomb with either. It's actually kind of creepy. I wonder if being watched over by something like that gives the queen nightmares. Hey, hey, keep that up and the founder just might come and watch over you too. It's covered in blood. With the blood spatter this large, it must have gotten all over the killer too. Come to think of it. There was blood on Dirk's clothes. The circumstantial evidence points to Dirk being the killer. That's what I'd conclude if I were a cop too. Why are things always so bleak for me? Guess this is where Inga collapsed when he died. Better take a closer look. So the minister was armed, huh? Mm-hmm. That's a four-shot pistol. He had it for self-defense, apparently. But I won't be firing anything anytime soon. He was carrying a broken gun around for show. No, we recovered a bullet here. Which means the gun probably broke as the minister fired its last round. Thing is, the gun's chambers are all empty. Yet that one bullet is the only bullet we could find. That is strange. Where did the other three go? Maybe Dirk ate them. We can ask the next time we see him. Just be ready for his predictably shocking answer. Come on. So this is the murder weapon. Emma, did you find any prints on it? Yep, and they were super clear. They belonged to one Dirk Sodmati. That's not good. Were there any others? There was one more print from another individual. But it was too smudged to identify. It's probably an old print from someone else who had handled the knife. Oh. Yet another piece of unhelpful info to add to our ever-growing pile. They've already taken the body away. It's kind of sad how familiar I've become with body outlines. I have a photo of the body if you're interested. He was stabbed right in the back. The poor guy was practically skewered. What's he wearing on his arms? Those are the cuffs of justice. Seems to be a tradition here for the Minister of Justice to wear those forearm cuffs. They look like they're made of a thick fabric, so I guess they aren't for protection. Maybe they're for keeping his sleeves out of the way when handling documents. Yeah, that's probably their original purpose. But over the years, the reason for wearing them it was probably forgotten. So now they're just one of many traditional things that people do without knowing why. I get it. Kind of like the way you roll up your sleeves, huh? Or your psychology, if we're going if we're going there. But I happen to know why I started, thank you very much. I wonder if this is Inga's cell phone. It should be. His fingerprints are all over it. Do you know if he talked with anyone recently? There were a few calls logged between him and his underlings. They're all members of the secret police who were directly under the minister's control. You mean like spies? I don't think that's quite it. Okay. Guess that's that.
The sarcophagus is surrounded by a curtain. I bet someone could have hidden behind it. True, but that's one of the many places the Royal Guard checked after storming in. They were really thorough. Yes, well, apparently one of their members loves mystery novels. He peered into every nook and cranny with an almost frightening amount of gusto. And when he was done, he said, Very interesting. It's like one of those locked room mysteries. Sounds like he's in the wrong line of work. A baby on a lotus blossom? That's one strange painting. Apparently that's part of a mural depicting the life and times of Queen Amara. You know, like a storyboard or something. So that baby's supposed to be Amara. This one depicts Amara preaching to the faithful. It's hard to put into words, but I've never seen anything like it. Let's see, the next one is... Is that Dirk? Why does he have horns? My best guess is, it depicts the first time Amara and Dirk met. So he's supposed to be some kind of demon who's seducing her? Well, he was successful since they got married after that. The mural continues on the opposite wall. Is this supposed to be Amara channeling a spirit? It looks like the spirit of some country sultan or something. And she seems to be conveying something to his retainers. She's on fire! This must be Amara's assassination as allegedly carried out by Dirk. They really made him look evil. This is the weirdest one of all. Is that supposed to be Dirk facing his punishment in the afterlife? Anyway, I guess that's the last one. I guess we're supposed to see this as a happy ending. Yeah, except nobody came out of this story happy. What was that? It's like a small army of monks, all neatly lined up. It looks like they're facing the sarcophagus in prayer. If you look carefully, each one has a slightly different expression. I wonder if they used real people as models. Some are frowning, some are smiling. There's one that looks like he's trying his hardest not to burst out laughing. Really? Wonder why. Maybe it's like those times when things are so intense you can't help but laugh. You know, like at funerals and stuff. They went through all the trouble of depicting that? Talk about going overboard. Okay... This is the grape juice Inga was drinking. He was probably nervous before his meeting with Dirk. So he drank grape juice? I'm not seeing the logic here. Mr. Wright told me all about it when he was hospitalized a few years ago. He said grape juice has something in it that helps you relax. Really? Are you sure he was talking about regular, plain old grape juice? Because it sounds like he was talking about the fermented variety. No, we couldn't have meant that. I mean, we're talking about a medical facility. They wouldn't have allowed something like that in. Right. Let's just leave it at that. Okay. Look, one of the statues is broken. But it's kind of hard to see from here. Let's check it out when we get a little closer. Let's take a closer look. It's a Magatama, I think. Did it come from the broken statue? Look, Apollo, there's another one. 
But the other statues only have one each. You're right. Maybe the statue was special or something. This thing's more splinter than statue now. The bullet from the victim's gun did a real number on it. It seems like something you'd get cursed for, you know? In Minister Inga's case, I'd say getting your ticket punched is curse enough. But don't curses extend to the afterlife? You need to stop talking... Taking what Deyuda says so seriously. I'm perfectly capable of thinking for myself. There's a bullet here. It's from the pistol the victim was carrying. My guess is he tried to shoot his attacker but missed and the bullet ended up here. We've already determined the rifling marks to be a match to this gun. Aren't those... Shall I explain? The science behind it is absolutely fascinating. No, no, we're good. Lawyers think they're so smart. You do realize we can hear you. There's something shiny down there. It's a pendant. There's blood on it. Wonder who it belongs to. All we know is it's not the victims. No one in the royal family recognized it. Emma, did you lift any fingerprints from it? I did, but... I wasn't able to get a clean one. That's too bad. But the blood turned out to be the victims. That means it must have fallen here in the curse course of the murder. It might be Dirk's. I should ask him about it later. Okay. Miss Faye was apparently tied to this chair. Let's take a closer look. We should try to cover every angle possible here. Slide the touch screen. Or use the circle pad to look around carefully in this area. I bet you didn't know, but I happen to be a bit of an ex-escape artist myself. Ugh. Trucy showed me how to do her rope escape trick. And why would you bother learning something like that? Because we're always getting into trouble when working cases with Mr. Wright. So I thought it might come in handy someday. Well, I guess you're right about that. Miss Faye could have definitely used that knowledge. That's right! So now, just sit right there and we'll get started. What in the world gave you the, di the, di the idea that I wanted to learn? Poor Miss Faye. She must have been tied up to this chair. I can just imagine how much her backside must have hurt after sitting here for so long. It would have been torture for you, I bet. I mean, you don't know how to sit still. If by that you mean I like to stay active, then I have to agree with you. Look, there's a blood stain on one of the chair legs. Really? You're right. I completely missed that. Let's move the chair so we can check under it. There's more blood under the chair leg. I wonder what it's doing there. I have some luminol here. Why don't you do some testing around it? Look! The blood sting leads all the way to the sarcophagus. Emma, is this Minister Inga's blood? Hold on one second. That's strange. I didn't get a match. So then, whose blood is it? Dirk and Miss Faye were wounded as far as we know. And the blood's been wiped up by someone for some reason. That's strange too.
Okay. I guess that's that then. What else am I supposed to check for? There's a painting up there, but I can't see it well from here. Well, yeah, we've already looked at it. It's full of ash. My guess would be this is an incense burner. Look, Apollo. There's something in the ashes. Let's see what it is. Is that a gemstone? Wonder what it's doing here. I got this one covered, Apollo. Would you like to hear my brilliant theory? Well, I guess it wouldn't do any harm. You know how people make wishes by throwing coins into a fountain, right? Well, you know, on second thought, I'm good. What? You sure you don't need to hear my theory? I was just about to get to the good part. Let's just ask Emma, that'll be much quicker. Excuse me, Emma, what's this gemstone doing here? That. It's not a gem, it's a button. Albeit a very expensive one from the victim's jacket. Must have fallen off and gotten in here somehow. See? Every puzzle has an answer, Athena. Well, I thought my idea was pretty good. What's with this soot? See here on the gemstone. You're right. It's full of ash. They must burn incense in here. So I was wondering, Apollo, did the ash come from the incense sticks that were burned in this? Or do people put their incense in after there was already ash in here to hold them up? Don't be silly, Athena. The answer is simple. The ash is the product of prayers from the countless visitors who came here. It's not a chicken or the egg kind of thing. That's an interesting take on it. It's so much more poetic than mine. Okay. Well, it seems like everything, but... Someone could have hid behind these curtains. Here, I'll go give it a try. Well, can you tell I'm hiding here? No, I can't tell at all. That's it! That's the perfect hiding place. We did it, Apollo! We solved the case! Sorry to burst your bubble, but the Royal Guard searched the tomb high and low right after they stormed in. They had, they said no one else was in here besides Minister Inga, Dirk, and Miss Faye. Well, back to the drawing board, I guess. My brilliant deduction destroyed in three sentences. I think we've covered just about everything. Maybe we should go over what we've learned so far. Why don't we save that for the next episode, because it's already been 34 minutes, and that way we'll have a recap at the beginning of the next one. So stay tuned, and thanks for watching. Bye-bye.